used ways to be aware of etiquette. Mm. Um, playing His Royal Highness Prince Philip, um, I'm sure you had to go through lessons. What was it like for you growing up? Was that part of your heritage? And have you become a mini Hitler with uh, telling people they're doing things correctly <laughs> or wrongly? Um. To be totally honest, I have pretty terrible table manners, so um, <laughs> I, I, I was brought up in a field. So, uh, no, I, I certainly haven't become a, a Hitler of, of etiquette. Um, yeah, we definitely did some lessons, um, and they have some curiosities. Like There was one where um, you can't just say, can I have the salt? Uh, you have to go, would you like the salt? Which then, then the other person goes, no, would you like it? And then that's, that's how you get hold of the salt. Um, so things like that, which uh, I would not have known. Well, um, do you do you want that pair of high heels? Do I want? Oh, right, yes, I yes. Would you like the high heels? I, I would love the high there heels. There we go. Yes, exactly. there we go. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. Um, the other thing about uh, Prince Philip is that he's very stoic, and um, he's a man of a different time. Do you think that the rules have changed for men? Are, are men allowed to cry? Do you burst into song personally? <laughs> Do you dance across the room? Um, I haven't done that for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a, a man of his time. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think you see the difference in his grandchildren. You know, William and Harry present very differently are different sort of men. And I would say it seems like they can be more emotional than maybe someone like Philip has been able to be. And that's, I think that's to do with shifting ideas about what masculinity is. What has been the most challenging part of playing this character? Because he's a real person. Mm. Um, but I would imagine the, um, the enunciation and talking might have been a challenge. Yeah, technical element in terms of how he talks, um, because yeah, he's very well known. Everyone has heard his voice for so many years. So trying to get close to that was a big part of it. Um, yeah, the sort of trying to be like him thing is, yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a big challenge. Um, it's curious when you watch it because there are bits where you go, oh yeah, that feels great, and then other bits you're like. No, he wouldn't have walked like that. So you're, it's sort of a curious relationship with your own sort of body, you know, because obviously we have, you know, I don't have the same body. Not that I've looked at his body that closely, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we met, yeah. um, you had almost no eyebrows because they had to make them lighter. Mm. I was wondering in real life um, what that was like for you, because uh, did people not know when you raised your eyebrows? <laughs> Were you expressionless? Um, I, um, I, I would describe it like this. People would look at me and they, there would be an expression in their face that, that something wasn't quite right about my face, but they couldn't quite put, put their finger on it. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it, who knew? Uh, yeah, eyebrows are important. So, yeah. Okay, as we leave, I've got to ask you one personal question. I understand that you have a cat called Pigeon. Mm. That seems like a rude, cruel joke. Uh, how did that happen? No, we weren't, it wasn't meant to be cruel. I thought, it, it, yeah, it did. Uh, it amused us. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I suppose the truth is, she doesn't really know. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Lovely talking with you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.